Hello there. So today we're going to talk about the basics of the fragment shader. Now, if you've been following my tutorials, we've already set up a basic shader that renders a texture. So we'll take a look at that first um, to see what's already been done. And then I'm going to play around with the fragment shader. So we kind of learn a lot of things that you can do with, with that. Uh, by the way, this code is up on uh, GitHub, link in the description. So we've got a uh, tutorials directory with a bunch of uh, chapters here. So I'm going to go into chapter 7 here, which for the moment right now is the same as chapter 6 was. That's my last video. Um, so let's see what gets outputted here. This is what is output. Um, it's a little choppy in the video, I think. It's a little smoother on my screen. And it's just a texture moving back and forth. That's what we've got right now. Um, so let's see here. For right now, I want to first off stop that uh, from moving around everywhere. Um, looks like we don't have the good syntax highlighting in this um, terminal here, but um, let's see. So I'm just going to turn off this, or I'm going to comment out this line. That should be enough here. Let's see here. Yeah, now it's just um, stationary. So that's good. All right, so let's see here. Let's get into the fragment shader, which is right here. And um, okay, first thing I wanna do is let's just display a color. Okay, so I'm going to copy this line and then let's see, change it. I'm actually going to use this line. So let me get rid of that. change it to this one and um, this will just it's uh, 0 0.5 with red so let's just change this to 1.0 and actually what I want to do let's see here let's adjust this huh? But uh, yeah, it's just red now, so that's cool. Got that going for us. Um, now, here's the thing. Um, hold on, a couple of things. First off, I think that this is um, basically, so remember, it goes from negative 1.0 to positive 1.0, both in X and Y directions. And I believe this is going basically the red uh, quad here is going from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5 in x and y directions. And that's nice because we have a quad that is um, basically, a, it's a one by one, right? It's an area of one unit squared, if you will. And um, well, that is nice, but um, you might be, you might find yourself over the years in different situations and one of the first things I want to do is sort of get my bearing on the coordinate system that I'm looking at. And what I like to do is to render a circle, a unit circle, because for the simple reason that um, this will uh, allow you to make sense of what you're looking at. Um, for example, if the uh, thing is flipped upside down and you can figure out where zero zero is and um, you can figure out hopefully if it's covering the whole screen or, or, or what. Various things like that. Uh, this will make more sense when you see what I'm doing. Um, so what I want to do here is, let's do this. Um, we'll make a circle. And so the way that we're gonna do that is that we actually have XY coordinates now. Okay, so I've gone back to the vertex shader and we have this out vec2 text chord. And this is what is going to give us our xy coordinates that we can play with in the um, uh, fragment shader. So text chord, that's with capital letters there. So we have that's the in there. Okay, so we've got our xy here. And that's it's going to be like this. Um, let's say text chord. 
And we'll get to drawing the circle in a bit. Let's make it uh, red and blue. Dot Y. Write that. We'll run it. And so you have this kind of colored image. So let's think a little bit about what's going on here. Our uh, X value is red. So on the left side of the quad, we have not very much red. On the right side of the quad, we have a lot of red. And then um, the Y value is the blue. So let's see, uh, at the bottom, we don't have very much blue. At the top, we have more blue. So it, when you get to the right, it looks, this top right corner, it looks like blue and red are fading away, but it's becoming magenta, which is the combination of red and blue. So bottom left-hand corner is zero, zero. We have no red and no blue. At the top right, we have a combination. So th this kind of thing is one easy way to see uh, what's going on but I'd like to make this even more clear here. Um, let's, let's do it like this. Uh, let's see here. If text, so it's going to be the equation of a circle. I'm going to make a little circle and um, let's see here. We'll just write out how that works. So X squared plus Y squared. Should we write it like that? Yeah, let's write it like that. Um, it's less than or equal to r squared. That's the equation of a circle. If you remember from high school math, x squared plus y squared. Well, actually, so if it's equal to r squared, that will be the outline of a circle. But we want to fill the circle, so we'll do less than or equal to r squared. So it'll be everything inside the radius there. So I'm going to say if it's inside the circle, I'm going to render it one color, else I'm going to re render it a different color. So if text chord, I don't have auto completion here, uh, text chord dot x squared. Wait, that's the, we can't do it like that. We have uh, the way GL, GLSL, that's the language here, how 2.0, not sure if it needs to be 0.0. I think you can just do two, but uh, let's leave it like this. Plus how text chord dot y 2.0 is less than or equal to um, the radius squared. We're gonna have a radius of 1.0. So 1.0 squared is 1.0. Okay. I don't know why I've been playing around with my Vim plugins lately, and one, two, three, okay, there we go. If, uh, da, 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 um, we'll take one of this. This also is not the way I want it. Okay. Okay, let's make it, uh, okay, this is all right. Um, else? No, maybe you want, however you like your syntax there. I actually think this is gonna be more readable if we go like this. Is it? I don't know. Doesn't really matter, does it? Um. <laughs> All right, let's do let's do like this for now. And um, actually, so here, let's see, let's make this solid. Wait, this is the outside. This will be the outside of the circle, right? Um, what should we do? Red, I guess. Let's do let's do green actually. Um, I think the F's here are optional, so I'm a little sloppy about that. Um, 
that should be okay. Let's see how that goes. Okay, so... And now you can see the background. Uh, ho hopefully you can see the slight difference. <laughs> I, I unfortunately made the background uh, sort of similar to... Uh, the background of the shader is similar. Let, let's choose a different color then. Um, else... See what happens when I make it green and uh, green and blue. Is that yellow or what? I forget. Oh, it's teal. So yeah, um, you can see what's going on here. It's another easy way to see what's going on here. Um, and uh, so there's a uh, part of a circle, right? And so this will give you kind of like the first thing we did was nice but you know it, it doesn't make it clear where the boundaries are like if you made a mistake and let's say um things were scaled differently than you thought maybe you, it, it's not clear that you're getting to the 1.0 area if that makes sense like the edge it's not clear where the edge is uh, in the th first thing that we did, but when we make a circle like this, it kind of becomes clear where the edge is. I can make this full screen, by the way, and it looks like that. Um, let's wrap it up there with this video. There's a lot of crazy cool things we're going to do with fragment shaders, um, but you can play around. I might make a video on GLSL, the language specifically. There's a lot of stuff we can do there, um, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, so thanks for watching. If you're curious about this uh, terminal stuff, I'll put the link in the description. And uh, feel free to check out my other videos about Linux and OpenGL. And uh, thanks for watching. Share, like, subscribe. Bye.